The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon or good morning, whatever time zone you might be in. You might be attending this session live, so welcome, or otherwise a lot of times those might be viewing this session recorded thereafter, which we will put up on our website after today's session in case you want to share it with others within your organization. My name is Derek Krebs. I'll start with a little introduction of myself and the Prospero product. A couple minutes in PowerPoint, but the bulk of session is going to be some nice little interactive looking within the product. Everybody on this session is in a mute stage, so if you have any questions, I'll have you take advantage of the GoToWebinar question panel, or sometimes as well, we might open up the floor for any questions, so you can also raise your hand, but I would suggest the question area, and a lot of times people are just sponges absorbing the material, so sometimes shy in that regard, but I do welcome everybody on this phone call to take advantage of that. I will put my contact information up as well for my email. So if you have any follow-up questions, I'll be a nice source for any specific questions you have. And let me continue within the PowerPoint just for a couple minutes, just introducing myself further. My name is Derek Krebs. I'm a consultant with the MSX Group. I've been doing this for the last 25 years, 100% devoted to financial reporting and budgeting. And of those 25 years, uh, my credentials are similar to the other members of MSX Group, where we all started at FRX Software way back when. We had such great reporting and budgeting products that Microsoft acquired us, and we worked internally at Microsoft going on approximately 15 of those 25 years. And then 10 years ago, we got spun off. We now have development back underneath our umbrella, I'm so thankful for, as we've now combined the two historic products of Microsoft's, like on the reporting on your left hand, like FRX and Manager Porter, or how about budgeting on your right hand, Microsoft Forecaster. Ten years ago, we combined those two products into one seamless application and process to avoid double your work. Has tons of new features, Prospero, we can leverage. You'll see a nice little glimpse of several of those today. And how about two for today's session? We have these webinars held every single month. I'm even doing two today. This first one focused on reporting regarding security, report distribution, graphing, and drill down. And this afternoon, I'm going to be focusing on the budgeting setup of HR and capital. So in that regard, let me acquaint you further with probably how you saw and heard about today's session. I'm at our website, msxgroup.com. We then have some upcoming events like the webinars currently in attendance for and maybe two things. One would be to be aware of some upcoming webinars. We hold maybe about four or five every single month, an hour in length, and record those for further information sharing and tips and tricks to make your budgeting and reporting life easier. Then additionally, I'd like to call your attention to twice a year, we have two full days of free online training. That's going to be live instructor-led. So in the spring time frame, we held ours two full days, one day devoted to Prospero, one day devoted to the Microsoft legacy applications like FRX Manager Porter and Forecaster. So be aware of those and please do stay in touch with us regarding our little monthly newsletters where we'll remind you of some upcoming sessions. So once again, welcome one and all. Now, that's basically all of the PowerPoint. I'm just going to jump inside the application, but maybe I'm going to take one little phrase back that is, I see several people in attendance today, many who are existing customers of Prospero. I see some also partners that are looking to sell and deploy the application. And third, I see also some new users that maybe are on the Microsoft flagship products that are maybe looking to pursue or migrate to Prospero. So a couple of little high level remarks I'd like to make to the application in case you are new to it would be maybe a couple fold, maybe another minute or two, excuse me, in PowerPoint. Let me just remind you and reiterate that, yep, Prospero is not only the reporting side, but also budgeting. Get rid of Excel hell, a lot of times we call it the budgeting side. And for reporting, primarily we'll do your general ledger reporting. Like in our demonstration company, we might have multiple company, several location and departments along with our accounts. But as well, Prospero is very nice and flexible to even do non-general ledger reporting and budgeting. 
couple examples to that. Maybe I want to report on number of headcount, units sold, square feet, et cetera, some statistics that might not be in my general ledger. And quick example on the budgeting side, Prospero can handle as in its own little data warehouse of what is or is not in your general ledger. Some other examples we can include on our budgeting side might be forecasts down to the employee or position level, or maybe my revenue and cost of goods sold modeling. Maybe I want to budget down to the customer salesperson product. So possibilities are endless in that regard. And then in this bullet point, as I'm going to segue out of this, but there's a couple other things regarding the interactive charts and graphs. There's going to be awesome ability, what we call drill down, both to account level detail, including transactions. And those transactions can easily show vendor or customer where I do not have to be linked to my general ledger to see that data. And then let me emphasize that last bullet point. There we have a nice migration ability to take all of your hard work and effort inside, let's say, reports of FRX and Manager Porter. We can migrate those into Prospero seamlessly. And then secondly, within Microsoft Forecast, you might have some budget data that we also can migrate those balances or similar into Prospero, which is one of our many differentiators, as you might be considering other applications that on the market these days. We are proud of many differentiators of some I just mentioned. I'll refer to some others in today's session. And again, my primary goal, especially as a consultant, is let's make your budgeting reporting life easy. Bring the easy button. Within the reporting side, there's maybe just a couple little two-dimensional slides like a report, additionally graphing and charting that I could drill down into. And then here, thankfully, Prospero, similar to Microsoft FRX and Manager Porter, it was created by accountants for accountants. Little or no IT involvement, some buzzwords we always say. We use a very simplified approach to creating reports where we use two primary building blocks, like a row definition or a line set, like you see there in blue. Secondly, we have our column definition. An example might be a month and year to date. And third, at the top there in green, this might be a three-dimensional report where, based on my responsibility centers, I'm using that generically, that term, that could be multi-company, locations, departments, including multi-currency, to handle all that reporting needs, including non-GL data. So there's a high-level overview for some of the new and blue people attending in today's session. And even though today's reporting session is going to be our focus, I'd just like to reiterate one more time that it's a nice... Prospero can also do the budgeting slash forecasting to have that be an automated single application and process, including all the bells and whistles in your budget regarding detail screens for HR revenue capital, budgeting down to line items, notes, audit trail history, allocations we can do. So a nice, confident reply, I'd like to say, of the product, first and foremost, its abilities. And of course, our experience with is there's really not been a budget model or report I've been not able to produce in Prospero. And those that might be looking to consider Prospero, we even have a free trial version of the application that most of our existing customers took advantage of to validate the power and ease of the application. All right, so that's my little lead in to today's session. Thank you for that little overview within PowerPoint. I'm now gonna jump right into the application. And when I do so, I usually like to look at a few different people's personas or positions with an organization. Maybe three examples I'll provide to you. One might be the CFO. Secondly, maybe me, the accountant in charge of the reports and budgets, and maybe a third person or persona that I'll role play and demonstrate would be an end user. And let me even start with the latter, an end user's perspective. And when I launch Prospero, you have flexibility for your installation and deployment that I'll paraphrase it could be one of three options. It could be installed on your servers. Secondly, maybe a third party that might be hosting it or even Microsoft, like we have a lot of our Business Central and customers in D365, the other buzzword for it, being hosted by Microsoft, that yes, we could link to that data. Or third, it could be MSX Group hosted. So I always like to rephrase that or summarize it saying, hey, good, you have options. Your servers, third party or MSX hosted. Then additionally, behind the scenes, we simply have a client 
and a little web middle tier for security and easy of talking to one another. And finally, we have a SQL database backend, meaning that good old data warehouse that normally stores actuals, budgets, or even non-GL like statistics. As so I'll recap those little words from before. Now, as an end user, when I log into the application, I usually land at this quick launch page, which I have maybe at one click short, cuts to perhaps reports and charts, like report number one, income statement actual versus budget, maybe I see every single day or month, or down below a rolling 12 month. Or secondly, maybe it's that time of year where you want me, me being again the end user, how about you being the power accountant user, you want me to do some budget input. Let me start looking at a report. Now when I go to this quick launch button, what it's going to do is it's going to pull up my last published report. And what I'd like to call your attention to, maybe a couple things. One would be, in our demonstration company, we actually have multiple company, but this end user only has access to one single company, the United States company. But when I log in later as the CFO, they actually have multiple company that we can report and grab off of. Or secondly, this user also is restricted based on what we call their assignments. And I'm going to segue to the security area. And there's going to be two buzzwords there. One again being assignments because this person, like the company, is limited to the location. Like they only get to see Denver. Otherwise, the CFO will see a large group, including maybe a reporting tree that rolls them all up. Now, third and finally, this end user, yes, is in charge of this Denver. However, they get to see all departments. And a couple of great new features. And I'm going to oftentimes refer to this being from the Microsoft legacy stack, where a lot of times how Prospero differentiates amongst others, I think, stands itself apart from the rest. And also a nice thing about my job the last 25 years is I've worked with several other budgeting tools out there, and I find Prospero one of the easiest to work with. And I'll shed a little light on that when I'm setting up or training like we're sort of attending today. Now, looking at this department segment, What's a very great new feature about Prospero is automatically for each of your general ledger segments and or companies, we create this tree called all. Again, automatically created and automatically maintained. So if I add new departments, I never have to touch this tree. Huge win for automated consolidation. Also huge win for when I'm budgeting. Let's say I want to budget a new department or new location. I can add it in seconds and then start budgeting to it. And this does not have to be in the general ledger, like my example, maybe budgeting a new location or department. I'm just gonna open up this report looking at all locations. Again, that is what we call security assignments that we'll see a little bit later in today's session. Second buzzword within security is what we call visibility. This user only had visibility to two reports, but in reality, me, the CFO, let's say, I see 20 reports or all of them but this user has visibility only two reports. I'll show you where we can easily define that. And let me go ahead and click OK. Now some of the interaction that I'm going to bullet point might be a few fold. One would be drill down to the account and transaction level. Secondly, perhaps graphing the report. Or third, when I do drill down, maybe I want to change my drill down. Instead of location first, department second, Maybe I want to do department first, location second, so I can easily change the drill order on my report. And maybe additionally graphing, or maybe finally adding annotations or notes to my financials. Uh, let me even start with the latter or last little bullet point I mentioned regarding financial footnotes. And I might excuse my screen. I could enlarge it, but sometimes I'll keep it a little bit smaller. That way I don't scroll to the left or right up and down as much. So my little apology, I could have increased the resolution a little bit, but I'll keep some of these more at a high level description. Now, my first bullet point of those four or five I just noted about interacting with a report would be annotations on our financials. You see a nice little visual cue, that little blue box on top of this account. I can hover on top of it because how about you, my boss, you, the boss being the CFO, I'm the end user right now. You want me to explain variances to you. That might be large dollar, et cetera. And then looking here to the right, this account already has an annotation or note. I'm going to thumbtack and pin that so it's not auto hidden. 
and I'm logged in currently as a generic user called Manager One. But let's say this is Derek Krebs on this date and time. Nice stamp of when I added that note, and then here's the note, and then later, maybe you, my boss, comes up here, and I clicked on the Add button. You might say, yep, Derek and I spoke about it, and here's our course of action. And these are notes what I call historical looking, meaning as I'm comparing the month's actual versus budget, maybe me explaining to you variances. But additionally, we have some nice little financial footnotes on the budgeting side that I'll just paraphrase and maybe a future session will walk through the budgeting side. Now, one of those other bullet points was drilled down to the account and transaction level. So I'm going to take one of these lines here, randomly drill down. Now, notice my columns of actual budget variance. And when I drill in, sometimes it might be expected. That is, when I drill in, I get to drill in across all columns. I still see actual budget and variance. But of all my different departments, only administration has data. And if I were to close this out, if I go to salaries right above it and drill down, since I opened this report for all departments, now here's department 100, 200, 300 I could see my data by or the next level, the tree, based on what segments I have summarized, in this case, department. And then how about secondly, when I drill in, this might even go down to the account and transaction level. Now, let me also rephrase before I take you to one other window, that most other applications, when I drill in, it's only a single cell. In other words, I only see actual, I only get to see prior year. I cannot see it across multiple, on one single page like I currently see it. And I get so <laughs> pet peeve of other applications that are so much more costly than this that can't even provide that rudimentary ability. So there's one of numerous things that I'm going to also quote as nice differentiators of Prospero when I drill down. And I'm going to go to a line item that does have transaction detail. That salaries does not purposely limits me from seeing some of that detail. And that's some other security we can also provide or deny for a user. And then here I'm just looking at a sales account. There's my account level and I'm even going down down to the financial transaction level. Now earlier we did not see these columns but when I'm looking at the transaction level I might see vendor, customer or different journal entry batch posting date. And for legal reasons we just have vendor, customer, numeric numbers but this might be Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. That way Maybe my manager or you can see all that financial information at your fingertips where you don't have to hunt and peck, pick up phones or emails and further research why. That could be all at your fingertips drilling into the transaction level. Now, as I close out of the transaction level, this is the account level. I have some nice graphing ability. Let me now transition to a different rolled person. How about here? I'm going to look now at a CFO. How about every morning, I like to look at the little dashboard here of a couple of my favorite reports and maybe a couple of my favorite graphs. And what we're currently seeing is simply a report collection of multiple reports that I either I could run or distribute in one fell swoop, or in this case, open and view in one fell swoop. I'm going to now take a couple of these reports and further interact with those, meaning drill down to the graph, even changing my subtotaling. And I'm going to keep that window up as is. And then finally, of the different personas, that briefly was the CFO persona, looking at their little dashboard. I want to though show you behind the scenes that we're always transparent with. Half the time, I can't tell you how many customers that moved to Prospero saying, Derek, we got overpromised, oversold, and over-demonstrated the product. So take advantage again. These demonstrations are free trial version and I'm now going to open up that same report behind the scenes simply it's going to use the familiar row column or tree so here is our income statement looking at actual versus budget I was broadcasting and then it might be familiar from the Microsoft era we have our good old line and column being used now a couple other look quick little buzzwords here I'm on the home ribbon this button called the catalog view I'm looking at all reports inside the system. And maybe coming from your Microsoft world, you almost maybe expect this. We've improved upon this functionality in window, where here I can see all my reports, the line or column being used, who last modified it and created it. And when I click on a column heading like I did for the line set, well, great. Here's maybe 10 of my financial reports that all share 
the single line set called income statement versus that's a huge differentiator because a lot of our competition might be some Excel add-ins where you would see reports like this, meaning I would have no visibility of who last modified it. I'd have no visibility because I'm guessing, I have no idea, I'm guessing that maybe these three share the same line set. And if management says, Derek, I want you to add a new column or a new line, you usually have to go back to all those individual items, open it up and manually edit each, even though it might be only one change or one column. So another differentiator I want to emphasize, for especially from those new people on the phone call. So thanks for a quick little buzzword or two on that. Okay, that's, of course, the Excel hell that I'm going to try to avoid in my report writer. We have the purpose-built row columnar tree that I think is a huge win as a consultant and helping customers all the time. I'm now going to continue looking at this financial report. Now when I generate it, I have a couple other runtime settings that my end user did not. When I run this report as the power user in the accounting world, yes, I still have my same little selections here, but then also I have a couple of runtime settings like, hey, what month and year do I want to include transaction detail? Yes or no. That might be a couple of items that I'm going to paraphrase. And perhaps finally, I usually look at the report within the workspace, meaning the viewer. Otherwise, yeah, I could go to printer, Excel, PDF, etc. Now, let me just take a quick side moment. I'm going to run this to the workspace. However, I know I have a short one hour time frame. I want to try to provide a lot of information and capabilities to you is if I were to export a report to Excel, which I'll do so in just a second, I can also send it to PDF. But let me first of all talk about drill down and drill order. I'm going to pick on this sales line from an illustration of that. Now, when I drill into the report, like looking at sales, maybe my first level down or my first click is down to the different companies like U.S. Europe elimination and then maybe my second click and preference usually is looking at the location like Miami, San Francisco and Denver and I can maybe continue going down further like this large Denver and this might be down to the individual department that we saw as the end user that only had that one single location or department but here's maybe my next level down or third level down department. I'm going to close that third level department Here's my second level location, and then here's my first level of company I drilled into. Well, what I can easily do, this button here called change the drill order. Now here, company was my first click down to location department. I'm going to drag department to the top like the sentence here reads. I can just simply drag and drop. Now once I click OK, instead of my first click being company 1, 2, 3, like US, Europe, etc. I'm immediately going down to the department level. Now most of the other products you would have to go to a second, third, or fourth different report to do some quick little analysis of this because hey I can now see who the problem child was in my variances. I don't have to hunt and peck for it really in seconds. I always loved analyzing data instead of processing it and Prospero gives me that advantage extremely over the others. And just to repeat that I was back here in the report simply changing the drill order. Now, this does not affect my permanent drill order settings because originally this company it was just more for on the fly doing so. And even this account level detail, that's the lowest. I even can throw that somewhere in between. So instead of me going three or four levels deep down to the account level, maybe my first click is still by company, second click by account, and then I'll just demonstrate that. So here is, yep, good old click one, company like US Europe and then maybe cl click number two is directly down to the account detail without having to go to extra layers deep so you can cut to the chase cut to that lowest level or account level any stage of the way and even I can predefine those meaning I'm going to go back to the report definition where we simply have a line set that's shared amongst multiple reports or a column I'm just on the options tab and then here's where I can predefine that order like I was dragging and dropping and when I noted you might have a preferred order you could do that in all right that's one of my favorite features and I should also say our customers favorite features now little side note on that phrase as maybe I quote something out loud it might jog my memory of a couple of things I want to share with you one would be 
I love now not being under Microsoft's ownership and red tape and bureaucracy because last year alone we had tons of new features versus Microsoft stack none really in the last five to eight years. <laughs> And then secondly, most of those product new features came from customer feedback. So two things on this home ribbon. I want to show you, first of all, this button here called feedback and support. And that's really a hotline into our product and support teams. It might be a product suggestion. Hey, MSX Group, I'd love to see this new feature. And we take it to heart. And we're going to put that on our development list and prioritize those based on the feedback we get. Or secondly, the same type of feedback window could be a hot line into our support team and this issue and support requests do the same thing and we have a whole team in support that um, monitors this throughout the day so I want to applaud all of their efforts as we get customer great feedback on that and then final little house cleaning note on this home ribbon is there's a great online help so those people that are existing users yes we have very detailed training and user guides or secondly, these webinars like you might be attending today, or third, wherever screen you might be in, let's say it's this report screen or line set column set, I can click this help, or even better yet, the shortcut for that help is the F1 button. So I just hit the F1 button, and then the system knows exactly where I was in the application, meaning I was on the report options tab, and then as I was describing the drill down order, I have then some links down here, great, that tell me about some rounding, drill order, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so there's how you can find out more information at your fingertips with the help button or the shortcut of the F1 button. Let me continue back of some of those other bullet points. That was the drill down and drill order I just finished with. I'm gonna close that out. And another bullet point led in with was graphing ability. So here, nicely, if I wanted to see this report data as a chart, by all means, I could do so. And let's see who last, looks like someone last defined this as a pie graph. And as I take one step back, always being transparent of what it takes, super easy, is at the report, like our good old line column I'll keep grounding us with, I'm gonna look at the chart tab. All we have to do is turn on this one little check mark to allow a chart view. There's our numerous different chart types. Look like someone last said it's a pie graph. Now, another way to phrase this is differentiators of how Prospero stands out for the rest are, you do not have to buy an extra module. This is included. Most other people will charge you extra. Or secondly, maybe some other product story is, oh, you have to do your charting and graphing. You have to go out and use Power BI or some other Tableau IT intensive tool that technical people have to know database names, tables, but this is accountant friendly by accountants for accountants. And then simply I just run the report with that chart view, which I'm going to return back to. And great too is this is the same interactive drill down nature to it. So here is my revenue and expenses. I'm going to drill into my revenue. And then here's my same next level down, meaning looking to the right, my companies. Now I have a lot of little things here, like I can come up here and on my layout, if I wanted to show the legend to the right or the bottom, I can predefine a lot of these things too. So I'm just playing around like these little slicers as well. If I wanted to do some slicers that are smaller than something, I can just quickly toggle instead of having a bunch of 20 different small slices. I've just grouped here in the upper left-hand corner some small slices over a certain percent. So that's at least my paraphrase. Like you see this chart ribbon, like the view, layout, or options. I could further interact with the graph thereafter. And one step back on the chart tab, I have a few of these little settings here. I can predefine along with maybe after the fact. Now, when I drilled into that one report, and I'm gonna go back one stage, this was my revenue, like in blue, when I drilled down. There, the legend to the right by company. Now, any stage of the way, this is the graph view. I can click on this button to go back to the report view. So now, really, I'm just now looking at my revenues by company like I did earlier, but I went from the graph view now to the report view. I can come up here and on the ribbon, I can either publish that report out to you, meaning how about me, the power accountant, you don't see this report yet until I know I've done my month in close and I'm gonna publish it, which I'm gonna segue to here partially in just a moment, or additionally export it to Excel. 
for ad hoc sharing or analysis, PDF or printing the, it out. But I'm just going to send it out to Excel. And I describe this rendering of Excel as two dimensional, meaning just a single Excel sheet. And just one second as it finishes here, notice I have all the graph formatting, etc. embedded within that. So great. I don't have to further massage and tweak out the data. It looks pretty like it did before in the viewer or the workspace. And then there's my example of a two dimensional Excel output. But what I could have easily done is maybe two other examples. Here is where basically I ran the report for multiple location. Like here's a tab of all locations or Miami, San Francisco, Denver, etc. Or third and finally, that was just one report I'm now broadcasting, like an income statement only down to the location or whatever company. And then I have another example here of a report collection. How about back to the CFO role? They want to see maybe three reports, income statement, secondly, balance sheet, and third, cash flow report. And what that simply is, is a report collection that I'm running. I'm going to go back to my Power Designer user. I earlier looked at one single report, like this income statement favorable versus unfavorable. But let me now segue to report collections. You see here different report collections we have. I'm just going to use this one example here. Now this one report collection has four reports in it. I'll call it report one, income statement, report two, balance sheet, report three, cash flow. Or maybe I might have a different report group instead of four reports going to the board of directors. Maybe here are six reports going to a different set of audience or people. And that again goes back to the buzzwords of report security and visibility. Now, before I get to the security area, let me just take a few extra little remarks in these report collections. They're very user friendly and intuitive. Like here's six reports. If I wanted a seventh, I just click on the add button and then it's going to pull up all my list of reports either in a folder view. Great. Sometimes I like to see or prefer it in that view or otherwise I'm going to turn that off and look at it in more of a list view. Now, even most applications won't give me that little quick glimpse of the list or folder view, but that's an easy way to maybe find some items with an application. I won't go through full circle with that, but that's basically maybe me demonstrating how I can add reports to a collection or maybe removing them. Or additionally, maybe me defining a single consistent report date to run all those for. And then finally, as we looked at a couple different outputs, like to the workspace or viewer was one of them. I showed you secondly Excel, but let me third additionally show you that, yep, we can go to printer Excel PDF or to what I call this publish report area. When I do send reports out to Excel or PDF, et cetera, let me at least call your attention to one other key field that is where I want to output the file to, either Excel or PDF, and do I want to include all these multiple reports inside one single file? If so, simply turn on that little check mark, or if you want separate files for these separate reports, simply turn that off. And that's basically going full circle back on this one Excel file, there's report one, income statement, report two, balance sheet, cash flow. So very easy, transparent of how we can accomplish it. No trickery behind it. I do have a PDF example here. Here might be looking at my income statement for all companies. Or if I page down, it might be a cash flow report or a balance sheet. But this is an income statement maybe broken down by company. So above was all companies, but here is maybe my U.S., and then additionally Europe. Now another way to translate that is, hey, maybe these people considering, this might be for the new people I see on this call that are not existing Prospero customers. We have some people that maybe will buy only a couple user licenses. Here might be a way to still get reports to people in PDF or Excel form, but the advantage is obviously in the workspace that most do actually get an extra user license for the user would be multifold the advantages of having a licensed user of Prospero. One would be secure in real time because maybe Sarbanes-Oxy, I want to be compliant. I've seen so many financial reports get to the wrong hands and people and company being sued made up based on salary and other data actually leaking out. Or another advantages of using the workspace viewer that I'm going to return back to with are 
and this is going to go back maybe to my end user view, I have the ability to drill down to the account and transaction level. That's not in Excel or PDF, but I could maybe scroll down to different sheets or tabs. I can still somewhat accomplish it. And then additionally, I don't have the graphing or financial footnotes, just to name a couple of the advantages of why are most people, yes, do have a licensed user using the viewer and workspace. But at least you have options. I like to maybe conclude that thought with. Let me now transition to a key topic or area, what we call security, and those buzzwords to repeat being assignments like that end user only saw Denver location or company number one for US. Or secondly, this end user that I'm still logged in as only saw these two reports report one, actual versus budget, or report number two rolling 12 month. Now I did quote publish reports earlier. Let me just show you one other little button before I look at security back end here. Now these shortcuts, just to repeat, are a shortcut to the last published report. But if I wanted to go back in time, like here's my 21 and look at some older reports and you can really scheme up these folders in any way imaginable. These are date driven ones. They could be group driven, like here's my board of reports, manager reports or Report driven, like here's my income statements or balance sheet. So possibilities are endless of how you have your folders in the publish report area. I am now going to transition to my power user, me, the person in finance and accounting. Little or no IT involvement. All I need is about one hour of IT's time to install the application. Otherwise, hey, we don't need them. We love them but we don't need them. This is a process that I, the accountant, am doing. So this security area, I'm controlling the person in the accounting. It's not rocket science, so it's gonna be super easy. So in the security button, I'm gonna to come to only one button or area called users. Here to the left, I have role or group number one administrator, or here is role or group number two. Those may be budgeters that have HR access or maybe designers or launchers, et cetera. And really I can come up here and rename these somewhere out of the box, or even I can come up here, easily add a new user or role in seconds. Regarding adding a user, let me just show you briefly that IT loves hearing, oh great, yep, Prospero can use Windows authentication, which means, hey, me, the accountant, nor IT, I do not have to worry about setting up users and passwords. We all read your network Windows authenticated users. Or also we can create some standard users who might not be in your network, like some maybe board members, bankers, whomever that sometimes are some other examples we've done of standard users, but most people use their window network one. Continuing, let me show you here this one roller group called launcher I'm in. Over here to the right might be some different check marks turned on and off, like the administrator I'm going to go to. Notice they have all of these permissions granted. But how about for a person like an end user that simply views reports, maybe they don't maintain security or entities, et cetera, or maybe they're not modifying our trees or lines or columns. And then some additional little feature here that I'm just gonna highlight a couple are, hey, can they drill down into the report, including down to the transaction, yes or no? Can they view all data? Notice view all data is turned off. If that's turned on, that would be like a controller or CFO View all data means every single company location department. Usually we turn that off for most roles or groups, which means I need to define assignments like Bob can see department A or Sally department B. So I'm going to open up one of my roles or groups here. And eventually we would have some uh, Windows users here. But here's all generic users. Now I'm going to take any one of these users here by double clicking them. Let's call this Bob or the person user beneath it, Sally, will call them. And one keyword of two, again, being assignments. I'm now going to show you that. Now, many times in this assignments window, I simply only have one line here. Now, I'm actually going to take a second example for that. Now, in this business analyst user, these are really just my companies and or segments in the system here. This asterisk is really just a wild card. So as I look at the company segment, either through the graphical tree, like that great all tree, automatically created and maintained, or I can turn this off to look in the list view. This asterisk means 
this user can see all companies, but let me change it to the example I provided earlier. How about they only get to see US? Or if it was a second company, I could sh show a second line, like company two, I'll randomly now choose, but better yet, I would leverage trees to do so. And let me segue now to the location. Instead of them getting to see all locations, here now are a list of all my locations, but better yet, let's look at trees. Either the default all tree, but let me look at a regional tree. Because how about Derek? Let's say I'm the Midwest manager. All of our Midwest locations start with a four. So in our single central tree, and let me repeat that, our single central tree, meaning I don't have to worry about a lot of sediment maintenance, I might define my Midwest of all the four prefix locations, or in other words, this one tree, I do not have to update as new Midwest locations with a four prefix get added, nor I do not have to update security because I'm going to go ahead and give Derek access to Midwest. So that might be a simpler way to identify or define assignments at the summary level. All right, and I can continue going further for other companies and or general ledger segments here as we see company location department in some of our illustrations. And then how about the other main thing on security is simply what we call visibility. And I'm going to compare two reports. How about a balance sheet and secondly an income statement? How about all of you, looks like 20 or 30 people on today's phone call. How about all of you get to see the income statement versus the balance sheet? How about only two people, maybe the CFO and controller? So I'm the power user. I'm going to come here to reports. I'm going to open up any random report because this illustration should suffice because really the punchline and finish to that story is I have a button at the report level for visibility and my two examples, one might be the income statement. How about 30 of you on the phone call? You get to see this report, so I'm simply going to turn that on. Allow all users to view the report. Now, how about, let's say, of all those people on today's call, let's say I have five of you are regional controllers I'm going to allow you to run the report where sometimes this could also go back to the role that was an extra permission I did not quote because maybe you fall within two groups maybe some of your region controllers that do journal entries maybe you run reports but maybe most of you are just in managers who do not run reports but at least there's some ability you can turn that on and off at either report level which I'm showing you right now or also described more officially, you could do so at the roller group level. And then if I had all these both turned off, let's say my balance sheet, my second report example, how about for the balance sheet, I'm going to say, nope, not everybody can see it, see it. So then here I can get more granular. Down here at the very bottom, I just clicked on this little list. It could either be at the role level, meaning group more efficiently, like I might have a CFO or board role or group, or I can even go down to the individual user level because maybe only my sales manager gets to see the sales report. Okay, and then easy, I can also click on the insert button. I can get very granular, but usually it's very easy, like all or nothing or maybe at the roller group level. And usually in a minute I'm done and usually I never have to touch this as visibility going forward. Okay, that again is what we call visibility. This was a demonstration at the report level. However, anybody attending my session later today on the budgeting side, let's say I'm working on two budgets, a best case budget and a worst case budget. How about all of you are just only working on the best case budget? So we had the same type of visibility on our budget version side. And let me just show you one little buzz screen or two in that regard. That is, I'm going to log back as my end user. Here is the financial report where I was explaining to you, my boss, the CFO, I was explaining to you some of my variances, like I'm going to go back to this salaries account, and you could even add further notes to that. How about I'm being asked as a manager now of the organization to update the budget because we might need be in our next quarterly forecast. So on my quick launch area, like I had a one-click favorite to the report and chart, I'm going to go simply to my budget input screen. Let me go ahead and open it up. My same security assignments, I'm going to be restricted to what I see. I'm just going to call it Denver, basically this one single location. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So instead of Excel hell in my budgeting, this might be a two-minute little summary of the great budgeting ability that 
most of our Prospero customers leverage. It's going to have a familiar spreadsheet look and feel to it, but whenever I save and write data, it's going to store to that same data warehouse database where I don't have to manually import and export data. I don't have to manually bring in general ledger accounts, departments, companies. All of that is read directly from your general ledger. Now my one minute tutorial of this budget input screen, real time with an application. How about colors? Anything goes. I like to have gray shade being what you stay away from. Maybe rose and white you enter data to. Here is an example. How about I might be in marketing. I might have one general ledger account 7350 for advertising, but what I'm expanded or could add is line item detail. Breaking it down my advertising budget based on some extra little breakdown. That way if you ask, hey Derek, why the hell are you budgeting $200,000? You can quickly see where, why, and when. And then even I might explain also with this little check mark, I'm going to show the annotations column. My earlier example was a financial footnote, what I call historical, maybe me explaining to you, my boss, why I was over our budget, but now here are memos or notes of why I'm budgeting stuff going forward. So great, seamless, cohesive process, one single product. Now I now have my budgeting and forecasting in there. We also have great audit trail history. Like yesterday, this was a million dollars, but here on the toolbar, I want to see audit history meaning who changed the account and when. So here's a time date stamp. Derek, manager one, on this date and time, changed the value from X dollar to Y dollar. And if I were to save a different value, you would see a different line and a different time date stamp with maybe today's date. But there's great audit trail history behind the account. Additionally, when I mentioned we have a lot of that detail, like HR revenue capital, one of the largest costs in organizations is a staffing. So these gray shade, oh, I stay away from. How about an MSX group? We have 200 employees. How about I simply come up on the HR tab, and this was already preloaded for me of who is on the payroll as of today, and maybe I have the ability to add new hires of their name, position, etc. Or maybe I don't have permission to add or edit this screen, or maybe I don't see this HR tab at all. And that's some other security settings that I did not call out, but I will show on the budget screen that you could restrict if they can add or edit employees, or again, maybe don't see this tab at all. It could be by name or position, when they start, allocation like hourly or salary, or even I could show everybody on an hourly basis or FTE basis, when they start and end, even I can break this out by month because maybe I have seasonality, like how about I'm a retail person in the Christmas months, I want to break this out by month to have more FT or hours by, pay rates, bonuses, overtime, so I can get as micro or macro in my budgeting, including maybe in our MSX group. I reside out in here in California, but we have employees in about 10 different states, and Derek has maybe family health insurance. You might have single, so you can add additional columns like workers' comp, cell phone, yes or no, possibilities are endless of maybe some additional quick benefits fields. And then my other summary to that, I've worked with other budgeting tools. They're ungodly. Prospero is super easy. Take me for that word and take advantage of that free trial if you're not already a Prospero customer. All right, and then I'll wrap up and I'm going to check the uh, question and answer area. We have approximately 10 minutes that usually I lock toward the tail end of today's session to see if any questions came through. And as I do so, I'm going to have to bounce to a screen or two. Uh, let me pull up maybe two things here. One would be my contact information on this slide. So if you have any follow-up questions, by all means, feel free to email me at any time. I'll be glad to field those items for us here. And let me also look to the question and chat area. And I think that was actually a slide I had from an earlier session like yesterday here. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to look at the question log. All right, I don't see anything that came through. Let me also look at one other window here, secondary chat area. All right, I'm sure there's probably a lot of product ability I did not touch upon today's session, but uh, at least on the topic of reporting, like security, report distribution, graphing, and drill down, hopefully I gave you some nice little insight of product ability. 
And again, reach out at any time. Otherwise, thanks for joining us today and have a great rest of your day and week. Talk to you soon.